God is silent, learn to discern the voice of silence. There is a, silence itself is a language. There is something God is saying. The moment God keeps quiet, find rest. He's telling you, I am well aware. But the carnal man would always want God, say something to me, and he's quiet. Lord, speak about my job, and he's quiet. Speak about my family, he's quiet. Speak about the next level, he's quiet. Carest thou not. Lord, carest thou not. Are you not aware that I need to pay my rent? Are you not aware that I just lost my job? My integrity serving you is what has brought this tragedy to my life. It's painful when good things lead you into trouble. They were innocently following the master. It was their loyalty to Jesus that got them into that trouble. It was not rebellion. They were not rebels. He called on them. Look at, they were holding his hand to help him in ministry. And now they are in trouble. How do you respond when your sincere desire, when your love for God, it was your coming to church that landed you this trouble? There are battles you had no business fighting if you were not a serious Christian. But now that you've made up your mind that in this entire idol-worshipping family, here comes a voice that will lift up the name of the Lord. Then a storm arises. If I understand when you go through tragedy because of lack of wisdom or carelessness or irresponsibility. That's fine. But what happens when storms arise because of truth? What happens when storms arise because of your commitment to God? Ask Joseph what led him to prison. Ask Jesus what led him to the cross. Ask the apostles what led them to prison. There are times that both the good and bad meet at the same place. In the prison cell, Joseph and the wine press are met at the same place. At the cross, both the criminals and Jesus. Be careful when you enter. There are oh goodness. There are times that life will bring you to the same location where lazy people are. And you are wondering, what am I doing here? I'm a hard-working person. What am I doing here? I shouldn't be poor. I shouldn't go through this. I sincerely put money in a business, hoping it will lift me. Now it's brought me to the same condition where lazy people are. Stop. Is God blessing us tonight? This is a word from the Lord to help you interpret the happenings in your life. It's embarrassing when you find yourself where you should not be. Joseph, what are you doing in the prison? Only criminals stay here. A man who has a covenant with God. The son of Jacob. What are you doing here? Jesus, you are the son of the living God. What are you doing naked on the tree? And he's silent. And Satan said, you would have bowed down to me. I gave you a chance. I bought that destiny. And you would have. I gave you an opportunity. I came to you and I said, bow to me. And I will give you the kingdoms of this world. It was your determination to get to the other side. You are so desperate to save men. You are so desperate to save them. You are willing to die. Now look at you. The Lamb of God. The Bible calls it the hidden wisdom of God. That the princes of this world did not know. If Satan had known the drama that was happening in the cross. He would bring Jesus down from that cross. It was the storm that, let me tell you this, every time storms happen, look well. There is something God is doing. He's using those storms sometimes to shield you. It was the killing of the children that took Moses to the palace where he was trained to become a mighty person. If he was not hidden in the palace, he would have died. So on one hand, while it was Causing other people to die. Moses found his way. It was the hunger that came upon the entire world. That took Joseph and his brothers to Egypt. Where eventually they found refuge. Storms may look strange. But they have an advantage in them. They teach you lessons. Storms can give you stamina and power. So that what you were afraid of yesterday. You are not afraid of it tomorrow. Have you watched yourself go through, when you see this, you say, I know. You came in 2017, I cried. You will not see my tears again. They, 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 listen, there are times in life where you become so fortified. While you are greeting people, hallelujah, how are you? 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. And someone says, Sir, I hear that you just lost your job. I hear that your wife is sick. I hear that your car just spoiled. You say, you are right. So why the joy? You say, I have learned by experience that every time storms come, I shouldn't focus on the storm. I should verify whether Jesus is in that boat. If he is in that boat, find rest. If he is in that boat, find rest. Are we blessed? Can I tell you this? There are messages that apply to certain people and doesn't apply to others. This is the message that in your lifetime, you must need this sermon. No matter how lazy or serious you are, you will need this sermon. Life will test you. Provided you are going to move to the other side, I give you a guarantee by the name of the Lord, storms will arise. It's true. I'm not a prophet of doom. I'm going to pray for you shortly. But this is the truth. So I'm teaching you the dynamics of managing storms until you emerge victorious. He said, now thanks be to God who causes us always to triumph. Hallelujah. So finally they get Jesus to wake up. And he says, what's going on here? And he said, you better join us in managing this. We've exhausted our skills. Storms reveal the limitation of your power and your ability. You see, because the pride of men on the strength of their achievement, sometimes it takes storms to bring you back to your knees. Because you will not, many of us on the strength of your obvious achievements, it will, it will not be easy to allow Jesus to take the center stage. The disciples exhausted their options. If they had a solution, I assure you they would not wake Jesus. So there are times that God steps back to give you an opportunity to see how limited you are. So that it is that storm that brings you back. Remember you stopped praying when the promotion came. Remember you didn't have time for Bible study again. When your wife woke you, you said it's well. And something happened now that money could not solve. That intellect could not solve. And then you had to go back again and say, Jesus, I confess my weakness. I confess my limitations. Take your place. When Jesus arose, he said, now that you have acknowledged me, now that you have come to a point where you see that I am the master of the storm, that your peace is derived from me, he said, peace, be still. This is the master speaking. It's amazing that 10 years captivity can come to an end the moment the master wakes up and says, peace, be still. Can I tell you this? You know you are a Christian not just by the breakthroughs you are receiving. There are certain attributes the world cannot have. One of it is the peace of God. Not just peace with God. The peace of God. The hallmark of the benefits of your relationship with God is peace. The peace of God. He said, peace I give you. My peace I live with you. Not as the world gives. He rebuked the spirit. These spirits were watching. Let's stop Jesus. Let's stop all these people from getting to the other side. And Jesus gets up. There was a drama there. Most times we don't learn from the storm. We focus on the victory and what happened. And now I'm bringing you back. To, let's look at what happened in that storm. The humiliation of the flesh happened in that storm. I know by my strength, I am the best staff in this company. And when you read scriptures like, it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. It doesn't make sense on the strength of, I mean, your room is full of accolades, full of all kinds of things. And God says, this is not so. I do not come into your life as an addition. I come into your life as the, the life-giving factor. And so if you think I am an extra luggage you are carrying, I will step back with honor. I love you. My presence will still be there. But there is a condition for hearing my voice. The condition for hearing my voice is that you must be willing to keep quiet and draw back. The voice of God is expensive. Let me tell you this. The voice of God is expensive because when he does speak, no matter what stands before you, it must give way. 
So when he keeps quiet, he knows how easy it is to get that solution. He will not waste that situation. His silence is because he's working on you. Listen, I'm speaking prophetically to someone. It does not cost God anything. Prime, listen, people slept as prisoners and woke up the next day as prime ministers. When God speaks, things change. So when he's silent, discern the dealing that his silence is bringing in your life. His silence can mean work on your character. Where you are going will not require this version of you. You need to work on yourself. The promotion is true. You have seen it in dreams and visions. But this version of you cannot be exalted to that position. His silence can mean learn to acknowledge me. Proverbs 3 verse 5 to 7. Trust in the Lord, the Bible says, with all your heart. It says, and lean not on your own understanding. He knows you have understanding. He said, lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, it says, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. The next verse says, um, what, it says in verse, in verse 7, it says, be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. There is the kind of wisdom that achievement brings to you. Read your Bible and see people who declared their rebellion against God. And they had results to show for it. God stepped back and their lives went down. And in that state, they acknowledged the God of heaven once again. Storms. The lessons that they teach. Because you see, there are levels when God leaves you without the training of the storm. It can destroy you. We are humans, so oh. there are levels of honor. There are levels of, of. I prayed a prayer many years now. And I told the Lord, I said, Lord, may I never know the full extent of my impact. I know that it can destroy. Just give me a token. Let me just know I'm blessing lives. I don't want to know how far. And God answered that prayer. Can I tell you this? For as long as you are human, wearing flesh and blood, the uploads of men will keep having an effect on you. And sometimes the miracle of storms bring your life back to balance. They remind you that you are human. They remind you that you need God. They remind you that your dominion is not absolute dominion. It's a derived dominion. Derived from a relationship. It reminds you that the, the central focus of your life is the Lord Jesus Christ. More than the destination you are going. It reminds you that if God does not wake up over your life, you will not arrive there. Even though you are seeing it already. Hallelujah. Let us go to the other side. And there was a training. They didn't know that they were enrolling in a school. A school of wisdom. A school of character. A school of power. They thought they entered a boat just to go to the other side. And Jesus said, join me. Guys, one day you will be my apostles. I will not be here. I need to mentor you and I need to train you. One time Jesus was speaking to the people, his disciples. And Peter began to talk to him about his not dying. Satan came to use the compassion of Peter. Satan does not use only evil. He can use good to destroy. He used Peter's compassion. Jesus, you can't go to the cross. And Jesus looks at him and says, Satan, get thee behind me. And Peter is saying, me? He said, Peter, Satan desired to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith, here it is again, faith fails not. It says, and when you are strengthened, use this same formula. When you are converted, strengthen your brethren. That means when you see them, look beyond what they are doing and discern what spirit is operating through them. Because sometimes the kindness of people can stop you from moving forward. They can love you too much to allow you pass through certain things. Their compassion can be used by the devil to stop you from rising. Your relatives can love you too much. They say, look, I, I can't stand seeing you go through this. So that you can discern that even though my well-meaning mother, my well-meaning father loves me so much, I love them so much, but this is not the voice of God. When you are strengthened, converted, strengthen your brethren. Are we together? Let me hurry up so we can pray. Now he rebukes the wind 
and the waves. And the Bible says there was perfect stillness. As soon as they get to gathering, they meet this madman waiting for them already. That was the spirit that was causing that storm. They meet this madman and Jesus looks at him and now they begin to negotiate. Do not send us out of this region. You have come to bring salvation. Keep us here. Jesus rebukes them. Watch what happened. As soon as Jesus rebuked them, they went and entered a swine and people lost their businesses, lost jobs simply because Jesus arrived and certain spirits were dispelled. The man who was healed and delivered, the Bible says he single-handedly went to a decapolis and brought people to Jesus. If they did not take the risks to move, do you know the same energy it takes to go back is the same energy it takes to continue? The same energy it takes to say, I'm tired of this business. God is speaking to someone. You are midway and you can look back and go back and feel honorable for a while. Or you can make up your mind, let them laugh while I move forward. Let them comment while I move forward. The miracle that storms bring in the life of believers. The Bible says, count it all joy, my brethren. When you go through diverse temptations, are we Bible students? Knowing this, that means let this knowledge give you stability. That the trying of your faith produces patience. And that let patience complete its work. I'm speaking to someone because in the midst of this conference, while everybody is laughing and jumping, you are crying. And say, oh Lord, let the, let the ministers that come to preach, let someone be able to discern what I'm going through and bring a word. In addition to this, it is true that you will laugh this year for sure, but discern what God is doing. His silence is not weakness. No, there is a lesson there. 